Hospital Porter's Pride and Dignity Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Her Panwo TV. Today I'm at my brother's house and I'm going to show you my brother's garden. This garden has won awards, I should mention. Let me begin with this here. Now this here was a wool of my pine. Now the wool of my pine is what is known in biology as a coelacanth. That means it is something that was thought to be extinct for, for about a hundred million years. The wool of my pine was thought to be extinct. It was only known through fossils dating back to 100, 150 million years. That is about the time of the dinosaurs. And suddenly a live specimen turns up in Australia. And um, since then, it's been grown through, cut, through cuttings and seeds all over the world. And, and, and botanists all over the world have, have, have clamoured to get hold of wool of my pine seeds. And my brother is one of them. And this is wool of my pine. So you're looking here at a living fossil. Let's go around, let's go to the rest of the garden. Let's look at the rest of the garden. Come up here, look, isn't this beautiful? Look at this. Like I say, this is one awards. Let's say it's far here. Let's go along. Please forget me not. Aren't they beautiful? Isn't it wonderful? These little blue. And look, look, bees. There's bees on these plants. I, I'm, I. Can you see them? Can you, can you see them? Yeah, and they're wonderful. Look at these bees going through these plants, through these flowers here. Come over here, you can see some more. They're busy, they're busy getting to work on these flowers. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? They're, all, they're going through these forget-me-nots now, isn't it? But there's another one there. There's some more. Look at that bee there. There's another one down there. Can, can you see them? Just keep looking and you'll see them. Isn't they? They're wonderful there. Can you see them? Can you see them? There's bees over there. Can you see them? Hmm. Look at those bees. We hear a lot about disappearing bees these days with ge genetically modified crops, mobile phone masts, Monsanto, Codex Alimentarius, various other things, chemtrails. We hear a lot about disappearing bees. But as you see, there are still bees in this garden. So it gives me hope. I hope it gives you hope as well. Let's go to the. Let's go and have a look at the rest of the garden. Now this here is a gunnera. Now this gunnera is, is an amazing plant with amazing leaves, and you can see, you can see that this. What happens is when the, the rain falls on these leaves, it, it sort of like channels it into the stem, and it, it flows down the stem. It's an amazing mechanism. It's evolved, almost an inverted umbrella. I'll show you some more things. Come forward through here. Let's get through these plants. Oh, I've got to squeeze past a few things here because my brother has packed everything in really tight. Oh. This is a little lawn. I've not much of a lawn. That's it. We're nearly there. This is the, this is the, the lawn we have here. It used to be a much bigger lawn. Where the gunner is now, it used to be a big lawn. I mean, we used to, before before my brother got to work on his garden, I mean, he, when he moved in here, there was nothing. It was just, it was just wasteland, it was nothing. But look at this, look what we have here. These eucalyptus trees. I mean, that is absolutely huge there. Look, look at this one here, there's another one growing out there. Now, believe it or not, right, my brother brought, um, brought like little saplings home. These, these trees grew from saplings that he brought home a few years ago. They were like about that tall. And they grow as these huge things here. Look at the white bark on there. That's eucalyptus. The old uh, Venus de Milo here. Yeah. That's it. Come, come, come forward. And you see, do you see this? It's complete. Whoever says women were harmful, this woman's completely armless. Keep going around here, and I'll show you some more wonders. We're getting forth to the top of our garden now. Now, what you see here is a Californian redwood. This tree here. It look, may look small now, but this, this tree could live to be 4,000 years old and be over 100 feet tall. 
with a with a with a with a, a trunk, twenty feet wide. This is the could be the world's biggest tree. This is this is a tree that grows to enormous sizes. And that's my brother's garden. There's a lot more to see here. I can't give you a complete tour. I can't give you a complete tour myself. The reason I brought you here and the reason I've um, showed you this is because I want to explain to you something very significant in the world of the esoteric and the supernatural and the spiritual. Now I'm a big fan of Douglas Adams and the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I don't know if you've read the books, there's, um, there's five books in the series, he calls it a trilogy still, he still calls it a trilogy, he passed away a couple of years ago sadly. But Douglas Adams wrote these series of books which he calls a trilogy, there's five of them. They've been made into a radio series, there's a TV series, there's a couple of films. They're really, really worth getting into. But I mean, um, Adams is, is known to be a skeptic and, and uh, um, quite cynical about religion and philosophy. In fact, a lot of his books are kind of like um, parodies of philosophy and spirituality and religion. You know, where God went wrong, more of God's greatest mistakes. And who is this God person anyway? This famous philosophical books by was it Ulan Kalufid, you know, this famous philosopher and his books. Now, um, there's one scene in the book where um, there's two characters looking down on the planet of Magrathea. And this has been quoted many times by skeptics. Okay, there's two, two planets are looking, two, two characters are looking down on the planet of Magrathea. And one says to the other, isn't it beautiful, isn't it amazing? And there's so much mysticism and legend associated with the planet of Magrathea. You know, it's like Atlantis, you know, and it's an ancient civilization. Oh, yeah. Another, and another character says to him, let's look down on the planet and appreciate its beauty. Who cares if there's an ancient civilization? Surely, and he uses this analogy, which I've just shown you in this garden. Surely if a garden is beautiful, it's beautiful enough on its own without believing there are pixies lying at the bottom of it. <coughs> okay, that's, that's the basis of that scene. And it's, it's something that skeptics quote all the time. Well, I've just shown you a garden, I've shown you its beauty. I'm not a skeptic, so how I can appreciate its beauty. And, um, well, you, but the thing about it is, is there's a kind of binary kind of either or situation here. Is it, if you know you have to appreciate its beauty and not believe in pixies or you believe in pixies and that's the only way you can appreciate its beauty. When I think that's a phony war, I think it's a fallacy. I get quite irritated with people who bring this point up actually. I mean, I have shown you a garden which have a lot of, has a lot of physical beauty. And uh, maybe I do believe there are pixies living at the bottom of this garden, and maybe there are. But if I do believe there are pixies living at the bottom of this garden, does it mean that I can't appreciate the physical sheer beauty of the garden in the way that skeptics do? In the same way as someone who doesn't believe there are pixies living at the bottom of it. I want you to think about that for a while. Thanks for watching Hapanwo TV. Hospital Porters, Pride and Dignity, stop the New World Order.